Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to hear from the knife makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up on this show, Blade Show 2022. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. It's the morning of the last day of Blade Show, and uh, it's been a whirlwind for me. I'm going to be staying here this last day. Didn't do that last year. And uh, just see how it goes down in the end. There's going to be some awards. There are going to be some knives that I have to buy because, uh, well, you'll see why in a minute. And uh, I just look forward to going back in there, circulating, and meeting uh, some more people. That's really what this whole show has been about. It's a cliche when you hear people say, Blade Show is all about the people. Last year for me, a lot was meeting the people, but a lot was also ogling the knives. Uh, but this year, last uh, yesterday, which was Saturday, I had the full nine hours there, and it took me nine hours to get from one end of the room, one corner of the room, to the far corner of the room, because I was talking to so many people. You might not know this about me, but I do like to talk. And uh, I met a lot of people that I've never met before, and I had a chance to catch up with a lot of people that have been on the show. A great thing about this year is that a lot of YouTube reviewers, the people I call trusted voices, were there and I got to meet them finally. And uh, man, that was great. I got to meet uh, Jared and Kara, Neve, OCD for EDC, Bama Knife Guy, Stasa, Lefty, um, people, Richie and Lindy, uh, people I've met uh, on the show but got to shake their hands, hang out, and uh, share stories. It was a great, great time. Uh, so yes, it was about the people. But now I'm starting to wonder, I got one knife for myself so far. I'm going back for a couple hours. Who knows? Something might happen there. But I got one knife yesterday. And I thought, Bob, are you slipping? Are you slipping? You're in a room full of, like, the world's greatest knife makers and knives. And you're only walking out with one. Um, but uh, I, did sh I did go to the show thinking, I'm not going to buy anything. I even told my wife that. And she said, sure, Bob. Uh, but it's... It's almost coming to pass. Is it discipline? I don't know if it's discipline. I think what it is, is I showed up late. I showed up on Saturday, not on Friday. And a lot of the things that would have tempted me into irresponsible purchases were gone. Like the Koenig Ariases were all gone uh, by at least the time I got by the booth on Saturday. And the only thing that was left was an auction Arius that was fully dressed in absolute milled perfection and beauty. And it was on auction. And you should see how much people were willing to spend for this damn thing. It was beautiful. And um, since I, I had no option, no chance of getting a Koenig Arius or several other knives like the AD-22, I'm sure that was gone on Friday, uh, the new Demco knife, I just didn't feel that temptation. Uh, I have a lot of knives that I want, but um, yeah. So I think maybe a little bit of discipline, I think maybe the knife junkie, and I only refer to myself in third person when it's important, I think maybe the knife junkie has gained a little discipline through this whole exercise. Probably not. Okay, uh, if you want to help support the show and uh, support what we do here, uh, you can join us on Patreon. You can become a member by scanning the QR code here or just going to thenightjunkie.com slash Patreon and signing up for the different, different levels of support. I, I have to... Uh, say a big thank you uh, to my patrons because um, th their support helped me get here. And uh, that's that's what it's all about. And I'm bringing some of this stuff to you. So it's much appreciated. Uh, if you're interested, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. On the state of the collection today, uh, I don't have much to show, but I wanted to start with this. Uh, this is the Kubi Flash that I brought with me. I know that uh, on the last show I was talking about, what am I gonna bring, what am I gonna bring? This is what I ended up bringing, uh, this 
excellently smooth D2 Kubi, and I've found out that they are doing some really great OEM work for, for some of our trusted voices who are making their own knives. Kubi is just, man, they are a great knife company, and they seem to be doing really good OEM work now for people too. So uh, this is the knife I bonded with over this trip, and uh, I, I'll be keeping this in the collection. So uh, I really like this Kubi, just wanted to mention that. So I said I got one knife for myself, that's not exactly accurate. Well, it's accurate in that I got it for myself. I got three other knives. I got them for my wives and daughters from an interesting company that I want to support called Brighton Blades. Now, Brighton Blades, uh, Christine of Women Carry Knives introduced me to this brand uh, on, on the floor of Blade Show. And it's a woman-owned brand, and they're really looking to bring women into the EDC and the knife market. And it started by a woman or a couple of women, I, I'm not sure, uh, from Fox Knives uh, America, who broke off and started this, Brighton Blades. And I saw them, they have a number of different blades, uh, some that come in little wallets and stuff, uh, really convenient for women to carry in purses and bags and stuff. But I saw these little, um, these little keychain carabiner knives and I, I thought, you know, I need one for my seven-year-old, my 11-year-old and my wife. Uh, the seven-year-old, hers will have to wait. The 11-year-old, she can handle it. She likes the peace symbol, so I got that for her. And then uh, for my wife. Uh, so these little little knives are pretty cool. They have a blade length of 1.6 inches, and it's, it's high-polished 8CR13 MOV. Not the greatest steel in the world, but for a little keychain knife, really good. Actually, I was expecting to, to see... Uh, an unlisted steel on this. So it's nice to know it's 8CR13 MOV. It's an aluminum handle uh, with a little carabiner and, um, and such. Uh, the company is based out of Utah. This was made in China, no doubt. Um, but each one comes with a little uh, maxim or saying. Uh, this one says, when you look at a field of dandelions, because those are dandelions, you can either see hundreds of weeds or thousands of wishes. And I like that. That's a good, you know, that's a positive message. And that's the kind of thing my wife would see and be like, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. She, she likes to remain positive. Uh, this one, the peace one says, we look forward to a time when the power to love will replace the love to power or love of power. Then the world will know the blessings of peace. So a nice little message, a little uplifting message on this cute little knife. Uh, what's the last one here? Let's see. Uh, for my youngest daughter, I got the little paisleys, and it says, if you think sunshine brings happiness, then you've never danced in the rain. Isn't that nice? I think that's cute. It's nice. Uh, I've never danced in the rain, but I, I think happiness can come anytime. I love rainy days. So uh, I got those Brighton Blades for them. Um, check them out. I, I don't even know if how far along they are. I should catch up with them and find out. I don't see a website here on their uh, packaging but Brighton, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-N, Blades, and uh, check them out. Uh, if, you have, if, if you are a woman and you have a woman in your life, it, it might be an interesting company to, to support. Okay, uh, next on the State of the Collection, I'm standing there. It's a crowded Blade show. I'm looking around. I'm talking to someone. And then I see Fred Perrin, the French commando badass legend who designed the street beat and the street bowie for... Um, Spyderco and uh, a number of other knives. He's got some other knives coming out through Spyderco now. Uh, he's a former French Foreign Legion commando, or he's a, he's a French commando. He's uh, he's in his 70s now, I think. Still looks cool as hell. He's got a cool hat and necklaces, and each one of those necklaces could be a garret that you could wrap around someone's neck and choke them with. But he is the most... <laughs> he's an interesting guy. I went up to his table, and he um, had his handmade stuff, and then he has some stuff being made by an OEM. And I was interested in the handmade stuff. I've been following him for years, and he's kind of one of my knife heroes. Um, I finally chased him down, found him uh, at a table, and I had to buy something. And the, they were, some of them were pretty expensive. Um, but this one is what I got. And it, this is textbook Fred Perrin. It's a little neck knife in his signature clip point style here. And he's got G10 on it, sculpted, and that uh, his maker's mark goes all the way through the blade, which is kind of cool. Um, 
fits in the hand really nice and has a great angle coming off your hand. When you look at it, it, it lunges down and forward off your knuckle line. And that's due to the, his signature finger choil. And this is a very kind of a French innovation here. And a lot of their uh, traditional fighting knives that are, are specifically for fighting and killing are based on kitchen knives or have a similar profile to kitchen knives where the blade ricasso is the guard. So you cannot run up onto the blade on a thrust. So that's how he designs all of his things. They either have rings that you can put your finger through so you don't lose purchase or they have these deep finger choils there. And um, yeah, I gotta say, I'm just really thrilled to have met Fred Perrin and have a conversation with him. I was telling Jim before we rolled here, this guy, he's got fighting and overcoming uh, physical adversity in his blood. He was showing me all of these crazy little implements uh, besides knives that you can use to protect yourself. And he had a bunch of picks, you know, like the dice pick I like to make. He had a bunch of those kind of things. Maybe I'll go back and grab one of those. Um, but his whole game is self-defense and, um, um, you know, just kind of being a badass. I, I don't know how else to put it. He had an interesting thing that is a little plate of steel that curves up on the ends with spikes and you lace it into your boots so that when you kick, it's even harder. So those are the kind of things that he had at his booth. Very interesting. You know, that stuff is right up my alley. Um, so I had to get this thing. This is awesome. I do have to find out today, if he's still here, what kind of steel this is, because uh, I just need to make sure I know how to take care of it. Um, it would look cool with a patina, but I, I think this is probably a stainless. Comes in a great little Kydex sheath. He makes nice Kydex sheaths and, uh, and a dangle cord that has the, the adjustments here built into it so you can, you can pull it like that and make it shorter and tighter around your neck. I'll be wearing this on the plane back today because um, it's so small, no one's gonna notice. Just kidding. Uh, but that does sound like the kind of thing I would accidentally do. <clears throat> I can't say I haven't done that. Uh, so there it is. That is the state of the collection as it stands right now. Who knows what it'll be like by 2 p.m. when Blade Show finally closes. Um, it might be a little bit more, but I will catch you up with it uh, on Thursday Night Knives. All right, so coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, I had a chance to catch up with six knife makers uh, that I've had on the show uh, to see how things are going. Uh, all of these makers were at a critical point, uh, with a few exceptions, when they were on the show, and now I get to see them at Blade Show as they blossom, and it's a real privilege, and it was great to catch up with each one of them. Stick around and check out what they have to say. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel, and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Like last year at Blade Show, Bastinelli Creations was one of the first uh, knife booths I went by. Uh, I'm a big fan of Bastian Cove. He's just a great guy. And I think the work he designs his knives are just beautiful. They are, as he calls them, tactical art, for sure. Um, so I went over to check in with him. And uh, as usual, he, he, he charmed. It was charming the crowd. He and his uh, cadre of French studs were charming the crowd. And uh, uh, it was great to see his custom stuff. So he has a lot of stuff that he has produced by OEMs, and then he has a lot of custom stuff. And it was beautiful to check that out. But there was one thing in particular uh, that, that really, really got my goat, and I really loved it. And it's not a knife. Check it out. See what you think. We're at the Bastinelli booth with Bastian Cove. How you doing, Bastian? Good, good. Beautiful show, beautiful work here. Tell me what your, uh, I, I want you to tell me about some of these new special projects you've been working on. Yeah. Uh, let's um, start with this. 
this. So that is my collaboration with Chattanooga Leather Work, you know. Um, ben makes some incredible slap with our name on it, like it's a new smile. And we decided to make the concept of the Kydex sheath with uh, our shoulder um, holster, the universal one. Like this is more discreet and easy to carry. Different color on this one. So that's an old fashioned sap for knocking someone out. Yeah, yeah, with what, the Chattanooga design. Yeah. And Chattanooga Leatherworks. So uh, what, what inspired you to make that? Actually, like, I love some old school stuff, so it was really easy to use the design made by Chattanooga and put some kind of our DNA on it and make this kind of configuration. Very old school inspiration, that's it. I love it. And there's something else that's really unique here. Yeah. Tell me about this project. So that is an old project. We started to make those like a few years back, like maybe like seven or eight years in France. And we decided to do that, like the, the wallets. That is a project I have with my friend Umberto in France. And um, because he loved the Kiridashi I made, he asked me, can I make a wallet, you know, for my Kiridashi? And I said, yeah, man. So he decided to bring back this stuff like a few years back. And uh, this year we decided to work with uh, Chattanooga to put this uh, project alive again. So, so, so that's a wallet and a knife, huh? See, it's a, like the small Kiridashi chisel grind. So you put the blade inside, okay? And you have like the card on one side and that. So it's really discreet, really thin. When you go in some place, you have a small tool with you and everything you need. Yeah. Uh, I like your whole idea of someone asks for your wallet. Yeah. Do you pull it out? Yeah, that was the concept, like, you know, like for some kind of self defense stuff. Like when people say, oh, you want your wallet, you give your wallet and the guy pull and you have your blade is so ready to use. So <laughs> it's some kind of trick like this. Very cool. Uh, what are you excited about most this year here? Um, yeah, like lots of stuff. Yeah, on, on the table, lots of stuff. On the other, like table I watch, like, we have lots of good projects and people make incredible job around, like, really. All right, Bastian, thanks a lot for talking to me, man. Thank you, man. Take care. There he is, Bastian Cove, bringing back the classic sap, just like from the old movies where you pull out out of your back pocket and whack the guy over the back of the head, except he's putting it in his one of his cool shoulder holsters. So that's the kind of innovation I like to see. All right, next, I spoke with Marcus Williamson. Marcus Williamson came on um, Thursday Night Knives once, and we had a very bad connection, and I've always been trying to catch back up with him. He's a South Carolina knife maker who you may have seen my pocket EDC that he sent me uh, called the Merlin, a little, a little sheep's foot. Great knife. It's one of my dedicated desk knives. Well, Marcus has um, taken advantage of his skills, and he has a sharpening company, a mobile sharpening company, and in doing that, he noticed everything he was sharpening were kitchen knives. So he has embarked on making some of the most beautiful uh, kitchen knives I saw yesterday. And uh, so check them out. We're here with Marcus Williamson of MW Steelworks. How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So how's your blade show going? Uh, it's been great. Been great. So I've talked and showed off the uh, pocket EDC worn clip you yeah. gave me. Or it's more of a sheep's foot, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the Merlin. Beautiful yeah. knife. I love that. And that's how I first got to know you. But in following you on Instagram, I've started to see all these different things you're making. Yeah. Uh, a lot more uh, EDCs yeah. and mm -hmm. also kitchen knives. Let's yeah. talk for a second. Tell me a little bit about these EDCs that you've been uh, okay. Basically, well, for me, EDCs, I make, tend to make more of a pocket size fixed blade. Uh, something small that you can carry in your pocket. Uh, got a couple new uh, new designs here that I've done for Blade Show. But. And what's the uh, what's the steel on those? Uh, they're eighty six seventy high carbon. Eighty six seventy. Yep. So uh, these these really caught my eye on Instagram, the Warren Cliffs, and then also these kitchen kind of Warnies. Yep. Um, you were just telling me some exciting news about. The EDCs when I showed up. What, yeah, tell me about uh, that. Yeah, I do. I've been uh, talking with a couple of dealers and have a couple of dealers picking those up. They'll hopefully be carrying those in their shop real soon. So, so is that something you can reveal right now? Who's going to be uh, selling your knives? Or one of them is uh, traditional pocket knives. Oh. He, he will definitely be having those. And then there's a couple other places I've talked to as well. Very cool, man. Congratulations. Now I want you to tell me about some of these here. Okay. These kitchen knives. Basically, uh, kitchen knives. I have anywhere from eight-inch to six-inch chef's knives. 
Uh, I have your Nakiri Sentucos. Uh, I do a, a bony knife that I work with a couple butchers on to get that down and, and what they want in a bony knife every day, which led to also making them a breaking knife and then the uh, bull nose butcher. So, do you call this a what knife? A breaking knife. What's a, what's a breaking knife? Basically, uh, it's what a butcher, between the bony knife and the breaking knife, is what a butcher uses to process most, most all of the meat. Uh, a lot of people picture big cleavers and stuff like that, but those are the two knives that, from what they tell me, they in their hands probably 80, 90% of the day. Yeah. Well, the um, the Merlin that I have is a, is a nice, thick, little knife yeah it gets really thin behind the edge it's a great slicer yeah. but it's a thick blade yeah there's a difference between grinding a thick uh, EDC blade and yeah. doing a kitchen knife yeah what's that uh, change been like oh uh, it's not too bad I know we start with most of these are uh, a three thirty seconds uh, on the spine on most of the kitchen knives and the, the bony knives you go down to a 16th on the spine okay but uh, yeah it's a, it's a little bit different, but uh, I do so many of them now that uh, it's actually, it takes me a minute to go back to do the EDC thicker ones to, to get used to those being a little, a little thicker. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd love to have you come on the show sometime. Yeah, we'd love to. Um, we had a, a, a frustrating experience doing Thank Thursday you. Night Knives that one time. Yeah. You're out of South Carolina, right? Uh-huh, yep. Where are you in South Carolina? Uh, in uh, Pendleton, South Carolina. It's then, up, it's up near Clemson. A lot of people know where Clemson University is at. Oh, Clemson, right. Yeah. And besides knives, you also do another thing. Tell me about that real quick. I uh, also do sharpening. Uh, I have a mobile sharpening trailer that I go around to uh, some of my dealers and stuff like that uh, once a month and offer uh, sharpening kitchen knives and stuff. Awesome. All right, well, Marcus, you're here to show yep. off and sell your knives, so thank you so much for thank you. talking to me. Take care. All right, thanks. I found it amazing to check out uh, Marcus's kitchen knives because they were so thin and so perfectly flatly ground. Um, and by comparison, so much different from my Merlin, which is flat ground, but quite thick. And uh, so it was, it was great to see his range and it was great to catch up with him. Just a cool guy. Everyone I talked to, everyone I've met has been absolute salt of the earth. It's been awesome. Uh, speaking of salt of the earth, bald man, knife and tool, Brent Smith. Uh, he has, was on the show recently, and I got a chance to actually handle his, uh, his knives. I had a chance once last year, and he only had one knife on him, and it was on him, and it was beautiful. And this guy has really, um, he's been really kicking it, killing it, uh, with his uh, fixed blade uh, EDC knives. But I was, also surprised to, uh, I was also surprised to see that he's an innovator, and he's created uh, a tool that has is helping him make his own knives. And to me, that is the whole spirit of this thing. So check out, see what Brent has to say. What's up, guys? I'm here with Brent Smith of Bald Man Knife and Tool. Brent, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. How's your uh, knife show, your blade show, man? Man, blade show's treating us good. How about you? Uh, great. I just need more time. We all need more time. And I need more money. And we need more sleep. Sleep, time, and money, and we got it. All right, so tell us what you got here. Um, All right, so we can start over here. Uh, this is the layout. I've got my clipper models, the clipper 2.0, 2.5s. These are two and a half inch blades. Uh, S35BN, we got a stone wash. And then I have some Damascus, these are Alabama Damascus. This guy down here is a four inch clipper, as well as all five of these over here and these are S35BN as well. To carry on with uh, clipper models I have some smaller models three finger and then we go over to the thicker clippers. Yes. Most of the other ones are this pattern. You got these thicker clippers clip are the quarter inch thick like right. S35BN. This one's got black linen micarta with some Tiffany blue G10 liners and we've got that saber ground. So something I was talking to you about earlier is I love the way uh, the way the grind lines curve up right. with the contour of the blade. Um, just tell us quickly how you get that so perfect. So getting that grind is done with a bevel grinding jig. Uh, it's uh, similar to a jig, but it's actually the uh, work rest of the grinder itself. 
that I've developed with a, a grinder maker with the Revolution 2x72. And so doing that, we're able to follow those contours, get really crisp lines on those bevels, and have them super repeatable. And that's how we get those. And that's why you get that grind line that goes along with the bevel of the blade. I love that. So how are, how are the uh, thicker clippers uh, being received? They're being received really well. Uh, we all like slicing knives, but there is something about getting a quarter inch thick, one inch tall blade in your hand that you can stab into just about anything and pry into just about anything. And so these have been great. Uh, they've been just what I thought they would when I first ground them out. Well, I couldn't agree with you more um, about the thick, everyone wants a thick slab every once in a while. Yep. Uh, you do all these uh, EDC fixed blades and, uh, and smaller utility fixed blades, but uh, I noticed a couple of other big uh, different kind of yep. things. Tell me about that's right. So I have a fillet knife here. Again, this is an S35DN as well. Has some canvas micarta scales. And uh, this starts out a 16th inch stock S35. And then uh, I grind down from there so it gets a nice flex to it. Um, and these are really good users. As well as this big guy here, which is a chopper. And this is a little bit outside of competition specs being a little longer than a 10 inch blade, uh, but this will take down some trees and some brush in the backyard for sure. With the beautiful pink G10 and black wind in my car. So something, that, well, first of all, it's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, but something strikes me standing here is, you make a an EDC fixed blade that is a quarter inch and very small, and then you make this really nice long fillet knife, super thin. Yes. Uh, what's it like going back and forth between those two formats? Um, there's differences in grinding. Obviously with the thick knives, there's no flex at all. When you get into those thin knives, you really have to go slow, grind by hand. The steel heats up quick and it wants to flex on you if you're not backing that steel with your hand as you're going across those belts. So you really have to pay attention and uh, just Work real hard to keep all those grinds smooth. Cool. So what, what can we expect from the ball band knife and tool over the next year? Right, so you can definitely expect more of these clippers. Uh, you can expect to see some of these choppers uh, and some maybe some different steels. Might be getting into chopper-wise and doing some runs on the clippers and some 20 CVs or 3Vs or four, uh, M4. So we're really going to be pushing out some more of those steels. and. Uh, continuing to roll with them and, and just perfecting these models over time. Right well, thank you, Brent. Thank you, Brent. Thank you for talking with me, and uh, I love what you're doing here. Right. Best of luck. I hope you have a great blade show. Thanks, Bob. You too. Oh, my pleasure. I like the thicker clipper, the, the, the uh, quarter-inch knife. I like all of those knives, but something about that new unnamed EDC with the small curved handle uh, is a real, a real temptation, and... Uh, Man, I'd like to see him make more of those. I really like that because it's a little bit different from his other designs. So great to catch up with Brent. Uh, I wish him all the best of luck. Uh, next, I went over to uh, Jack Wolf Knives, a little company you may know, Jack Wolf Knives. And uh, you know we talk about them a lot here. And it was great to see Ben at his table selling the knives. Last year, he had all of his prototypes lined up and people could fiddle with them. But he'd have to say, I can't, I'm not, these are prototypes, I'm not selling them. This year, man, they were flying off the shelves. It was very cool to see, and I'm not surprised. They are the best modern slip joints I've experienced. And uh, they've taken these classic designs and updated them with materials and little design tweaks from Ben, who is an absolute connoisseur of, of the type. And uh, they are just awesome. So it was great. I also saw his dad, who's a really cool guy. I got a chance to catch up with him, but I didn't videotape that. Anyway. You know Ben Belkin. Look at what he's doing and look at how well he's doing. Um, if you just stick to it and you follow your dream, you can do it just like Ben. All right, so it's a year later. It's yep. a year later. We're back here at Blade Show. It's Blade 2022. Tell me, Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives, what has changed? A lot has changed, Bob. A lot has changed. So for the first time at a show, we have knives for sale. That's pretty cool. And we've already brought two models to the market and a third model being launched on June 17th, which we have here to sell at the show as well. 
Okay, so we know about the Gunstock Jack and we know about the Laidback Jack. Can you show us what's going to be premiering on June 17th? Absolutely. That'd be the little bro Jack. Let me grab one. Sure. While you do that, I'll give a little bullshit. Man, it looks, yeah, right. your table looks like it's been ravaged by the <laughs> yeah. crowds. Yeah, we've done really well here and people are super excited. So here's a little bro. What we have here is a traditional boys knife. Probably the oldest pattern in my lineup as far as how long the design has been around. Probably the most classic slip joint knife in my lineup at this time, I would say. So what do we have? Well, we have a 3.55 inch closed handle. We have a blade, oh, so length of the blade slips my mind at the moment, but it's obviously legal to carry. Titanium liners and bolsters that are integral. Micarta scales with one option in fat carbon. A flat and flush back spring in all three positions. You'll find that the blade and the spring are on the exact same plane as well, which is a hallmark of the skilled hand labor involved in making these. There's a hollow grind that comes all the way up, super thin behind the edge, extremely good at its uh, task of cutting, which is what it's designed to do. And as you sharpen it over time, it'll stay thin behind the edge for quite a while due to that hollow grind. The stock is about three millimeters, so it's sturdy at the spine and strong in the joint. Make it walk and talk. Got it? Sounds great, looks great, closes dead center. It's just a classic slip joint knife. It's beautiful, and, and I commented to you that it's, uh, the boys' knife is one of my all-time favorite. Uh, that and the laid back, like uh, a uh, swayback jack and a boys' knife, are my two favorites. And you've already nailed those. What do you have coming up in the in the future? Are you going to release more knives this year, or are you going to? Like, how's that? What, what are you doing? What are your plans? So the plan is, on a monthly basis, you'll see a release from me, usually middle of the month on a Friday. There's 11 models currently displayed on my website. That's prototype photography. So you'll see a little bit of nuanced differences when they hit the market. But you can look at the website and see what's coming. The order is not shared with the public. I like to keep a little bit of suspense involved, the order in which they're released. But I'll always give you two to three weeks heads up before it drops so you can decide if you want to set aside the funds to buy one. Right on. Well, I think what you're doing is awesome here, man. And uh... You don't need me to tell you that. I've been saying that for a long time. Thank you for bringing these amazing modern slip joint knives to the market. Thank you, Bob. I've appreciated you and all your support since day one. You're the first one to give me an audience, and I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, sir. Jack Wolf Knives. So, unfortunately, I could not get Ben to uh, let me know what the next release is going to be, but I love this one knife every month uh schedule it's awesome mid-month every month just uh just remember and keep your alarm set i don't know what it's gonna be but i think i might have an inkling but psh, who knows uh go to his website check out all of his designs and uh, see what you think next up i went to luft concepts i saw jake wright of bearded gear and of course luft concepts his knife project his knife company uh with his buddy colin and they have been really, man, selling the hell out of this uh, Luft Concepts Avant because what they did was distill out all the best qualities, all of their favorite qualities in an EDC knife. And those happen to be uh, commonly appreciated qualities across the type. So uh, they, were move, they were selling these things like hotcakes. They had, they had their regular two versions and then they had two versions <clears throat> just for Blade Show. Uh, so they were selling four different types, and uh, like I said, it was great to meet him in person. It's funny, everyone I met in person was taller than expected, uh, Jake, Jake among them, and uh, it was great to see them uh, receive crowds of people that have never met them or seen them before, uh, but who really just had an appreciation for the Yvonne. Check it out. Uh, All right, 
right, we're here with Jake Wright of Luft Concepts. Jake, how you doing? I'm doing so good. We're at Blade Show. For Blade Show. So, so this is your first year at Blade Show Atlanta. Yes. Uh, as Luft Concepts. Correct. So, what do you got here? Let's see it. We've got the Avant. So, right now we're we're one model. This is our first production model, and uh, we got in four different flavors. So, we did a pre-order on two of them, so they should look familiar. And then two of them are show only, so they've only been available. Blade Texas, CCKS, and then here. So and the show show only models are the natural micarta. Natural micarta. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at this natural and black. It looks it's a fun it's combo. So beautiful. So tell me, how are you liking being a knife company owner? It's really weird to be on this side of the table. I did a lot more knife shows on that side of the table. So it's, it's surreal and strange, but it's super fun. We're having a great time. It's uh, exhausting in the best of ways. And yeah, I mean, it was my hobby before it was what I do professionally. So it's stupid fun. So uh, what has the um, response been from the public, general public walking by? It's been really positive. Um, I didn't realize how many people would have never seen our knife before and end up leaving with one. I thought it like the people who buy knives at knife shows know exactly what they're coming for kind of thing. But a lot of people pick it up immediately, gawk at how light it is. People don't expect it to weigh as little as it does. So that kind of draws them in. And it's been really positive. I mean, obviously not every knife is for every person and we know that, but we've been very happy with the response from people in general. So I reviewed the knife, you sent it out to me uh, yep. graciously, that was awesome. One of the and prototypes, then, yeah. One of the prototypes, and then you and I had a chance to talk about it on the show. Correct. But, but uh, tell people who are watching now, what is the unique selling proposition of these knives? What are the, what are yeah. the details you want to show off? So there's a lot of little things. Um, this one I need to adjust, that's hilarious. But there's, it's basically a love letter to all of the things that Ryan and I love in a knife, and an F you to all the things we hate. So. They're, you're not going to find any jimping anywhere on the knife. I hate jimping. I don't like it. I prefer knives that are just ergonomic on their own. Um, we've got a crown spine just because we love it. We have a wire clip because we actually love to use and carry wire clips. Multiple deployment methods because we like for it to be fun. It's super lightweight because we don't want to carry a heavy knife. It's like, it's just all of the things that we like that generally aren't found all in one place and we brought them into the one place. But. Granted, that's our taste, so not everyone will agree that right. jumping sucks. Right. So. right. Well, that's one of the things I love about people like you, collectors, enthusiasts, who are having knives made, designing knives themselves, and having them produced by the best producers out there. The thing I like about that is that that's what the public is getting. They're getting distilled out all the best qualities of, of, uh, of a given knife. Best according to me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, according to you, and if someone has different tastes, they can go to another person who's totally. doing what you're doing. But the point is, like, it is it is all of your taste coming out. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's just meant to be everything we like, nothing we don't, and at a price point that we would pay for it. You know. Right. Yeah. So, what are your future plans? That's a great question. Right now, our big hurdle is manufacturing. That's everyone's hurdle, it seems like. So, lead times are brutal <laughs> to have anyone build knives for you. We did. Riat for this first run. We plan to do some more work with Riat, but it's we have a lot we want to do, and the only frustrating thing is time because it, it takes time. Yeah. So we have iterations of the Avant coming. We'll make more announcements on that soon. Different materials, some fun things, and then we've got other designs that we're ready to move forward on. But we need to make sure we do the project the way it makes sense to roll it out, not just because we want to do it. So. All right, Jake. Well, thank you so much, man. Have a great rest of your blade show. Appreciate it. I hope each and every one of these sells, I'm sure they will. Thank you, Bob. All right, man. Thank you. They hinted at the fact that Luft Concepts will be coming out with another knife very shortly and that they have others in the works. And, man, that is exciting to me. Uh, I can't wait to see what that is because I happen to know that it's going to be larger and very different from the Avant. Now, the Avant I really, really liked. Uh, Jake loaned it to me to check out, and I really liked it, uh, but not exactly in my wheelhouse. But what they described to me, which will be their next knife or the knife after that, is because it's going to be larger and, well, a little more, a little different, uh, a little bit more in my taste range, and I really look forward to that. Uh, okay, so lastly, I had a chance to catch up with Kambu, uh, Grigors Grabarski. Uh, from Poland, you know him as Kambu. He's the uh, he designs knives exclusively for Best Tech. 
in the beautiful organic biomorphic sort of uh, style. And uh, I got a chance to catch up with him. It was great because it's his first time in the U.S. and he's had a wonderful time. It was great to sort of feed off of his energy. And I look forward to seeing him again next year. Hopefully uh, all of the foreigners who got a chance to come this year, who didn't last year, will be coming again over and over and over. Because it was really cool to see the uh, all of the foreign knife companies um, peopled by those people. So um, Kambu was one of them. He was at the best tech table uh, showing off his knives. And I got a chance to check out his new giant design, the Fairchild, named after the American aircraft from World War II. So check this out. It's Kambu. I'm here with Gregor Gavarsky. You know him as Kambu. Kambu, how's it going, sir? It's amazing, thank you. So this is your very first blade show. How's it going? Yes, sir. I'm I'm very excited to get to finally get here. So is this uh, is this what you were expecting? Yes, absolutely. It's the magic of the biggest night night show of the world. Okay, so you're here at the Best Tech table. Yes, sir. Uh, and last time you were on the show, you were talking about your new model, the Fairchild. Yes, um, I have it with me. Yeah, let's see. I can show you. This is the Fairchild. It's pretty big. So what's the reception been like? How do people like it so far? Yeah, the feedback is better than I expected. I didn't know uh, that so many people like uh, huge knives. Now I know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, and then you also have this. Yeah, right just here. just got it yesterday. This is the Buvaya, the final uh, the final piece. They are live at dealers, so you can buy it right now. And I'm very happy with final effect. So <laughs> Buvaya doesn't that mean crocodile in? Tagalog? Yes, sir. The crocodile. That is cool. The crocodile from space. Crocodile from space. <laughs> so. Uh, you showed me a knife that you've worked with, uh, Eric Outer of Outer Absolutely. Limitless. It's a collaboration knife. Tell me about this one. This is Fixed Blade called Horizon. This one is a prototype. Because I'm not an outdoor guy, I'm a more mall ninja. Uh, and Eric is an expert. He, uh, We co-designed this knife. Uh, I did my final designer's touch on this. And these are accepted for production and will be available in a few months. So expect the first hard use big blade from Best Tech Knives. So what do you have coming up here? Are you going to be here the whole weekend? No, I'm tomorrow. I'm flying back to Poland. Okay, so how has it been then? How how has the sales been here with all of your knives? I wasn't selling anything, just exhibiting. But if, if I will sell, I, I probably will, would be sold out, so the feedback was great. I'd like to show you the, the prototype I brought from Poland uh, with this kind of lock. Uh, it don't have, uh, still don't have a name, uh, so it has reversible pocket clip for lefties. It will be first design of mine uh, with uh, left uh, for lefties. And the action is pretty amazing, so this is in production and uh, it will be available soon, so stay tuned for more My Design Blade by Pestec. Man, this thing is beautiful. Is this in aluminum or is that titanium? No, it's titanium. Wow. The finish is, you know, polished and anodized. Another beautiful artistic knife from you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, nicely done. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck here and have an awesome trip back to uh, Poland. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. All right, take care, sir. Take care. It was so good to catch up with Kambu and shake his hand in person. I've spoken with him twice. I've had two one-hour conversations with him, and man, I don't have one-hour conversations with anyone except the people I have on the uh, interview show, so it really felt like I already knew him when I, when I bumped into him. Oddly enough, the best tech table was not selling anything. They were just showing, uh, just showing their knives. And I thought that was odd. Uh, I thought that was odd because while I was standing there talking with Kambu, a number of people came up and tried to buy stuff. And he's like, sorry, I can't sell these. They're not for sale. They're just for show. 
And I thought that was very odd. I mean, what better place to unload your inventory of Vestex than a blade show? So who, who knows? But I don't know. I'm not the owner of a giant knife company, so I, I don't know how that all works. Um, so I'm going to close now. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And I just wanted to say last night I went to the pits. That's the area where everyone gets together uh, adjacent to the show in the hotel that's attached to the, to the um, convention center and had a chance to meet with a whole bunch of people. And, uh, but last night I sat down with um, Shane Gables, had a great conversation with him. He's got a, he's got a, a, a channel and comes on the live show a lot. I got a chance to meet and talk with Car uh, Jared and Kara of Neves Knives, OCD for EDC, Bama Knife Guy, Stasa 23, Lefty EDC, Bearded Gear, Richie and Lindy Lou of the Knife Modders, Super Steel Steve, always a good time. And uh, Clay of Knife Magazine, I, I got to, uh, which we, we found out, we went to the same high school. He just graduated five years after me. So very interesting. Um, so what a great time. It really was about meeting the people. It really was about finally uh, catching up with people. So if it's in your, you know, if you can do it, I highly recommend coming to Blade Show. And if you can do that and, and you know, make it your vacation, come to Blade Show and introduce yourself to people. I can't, I walked up to so many people and just introduced myself um, <clears throat> and just talk to them and, and, and people will talk to everyone. It's a, I don't know, it's just a great, warm environment and uh, so i'm kind of buzzing off of it i'm gonna go back over there spend the rest of my time here and then make my way to the airport and fly home but it's been a great great time um, thanks for watching this and thanks for supporting the show it's really appreciated uh it was such a thrill walking around and having people recognize my face because they've seen the, the thumbnail or because they've watched the show um, so i just want to thank everyone who watches and listens and supports it's great. And speaking of listening, you can download this right here on all of these podcast apps. Uh, they're, it's pretty much, we're pretty much on every one of them. So if you don't want to watch it, if you can't watch it, you can listen to it. Oh, wait. And before I sign off, I have to say, I met a gentleman um, standing at, uh, at Arcane Designs. I was uh, talking with Israel of Arcane Designs, and a gentleman comes up next to me. He's like, are you, are you the knife junkie? And I said, yes. And he said, I recognize your voice. You don't know how many commutes to work and from work you've saved for me. And I, to me, that was the biggest compliment ever because that's exactly how I use and listen to podcasts. It's to make the things that I have to do go quicker, like sit in traffic, wash dishes, etc. So uh, the ultimate compliment, I was, I was so pleased and just so happy to meet everyone. And uh, now I'm just going into a gush fest, so I'll let it drop right there. Thanks again for watching the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, be sure to tune in next week for uh, Crazy Sharp, Mike Emler, and uh, he's fun, man. I was about to say crazy is not is not the wrong moniker, but he's not crazy. He's just hilarious. We have a great conversation. He's also very opinionated. That's why I wanted to have him on. So it was great to uh, discuss his opinions. Be sure to check it out next week. Again, thanks for watching the Knife Junkie podcast brought to you this, this Sunday from Atlanta, Blade Show 2022. I'm Bob DeMarco, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.